Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Captain Lin, and I'll be the chairperson for this afternoon's proceedings. Um, this afternoon, we're just awaiting the arrival of the helicopter. Um, it should be here in about four minutes or so. After it arrives, it will pass through the, the water cannon salute, and it will be parked on this end of the hangar, and then we'll proceed, proceed with the afternoon's um, activities. So this time we'll just, we're just awaiting the arrival of the helicopter and then we'll commence uh, the proceedings for this afternoon. Thank you.
of this afternoon, but simple. And it is my intent to navigate you through the program as quickly and efficiently as possible. So without any further delays in continuing with the program for this afternoon, I'd like to invite uh, the CEO of your core, Colonel Ramjag, to give his opening remarks. Colonel. Excellency, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali, Prime Minister, Ministers of Government, 
national security advisors, heads of state agencies, former chief of staff, Brigadier Godfrey Bess, senior officers, officers, ranks of Air Corps, civilian, good afternoon. I am Lieutenant Colonel Ramja, the commander officer of the Air Corps. And I will do two things. My welcome, and I will speak briefly on the King Henry 50, Beechcraft, and the Bell 412 that I just witnessed arrive. These two aircraft are the latest addition to our fleet. The operationalization and acquisition of these aircraft is testimony of our commander in chief commitment and vision for the Air Corps. His intention, along with my and my officers' intention, is to make the Air Corps the best within the country and the region. The King Air, the Beechcraft, some insight as to the background and the history of this aircraft. After almost two years at Propel's maintenance facility in Florida, the Beechcraft departed Miami Executive Airport on Saturday 24th of June and flew to Guyana via Antigua. I stopped in Antigua for fuel and then proceeded to Guyana. A distance of about 1,800 miles and this took about seven hours. Now, to put us in context, this is quite a feat. All right, we never had such an asset that could have done such a mission in such short time with only one stop. The Beechcraft is from the world's most popular business type to our proper aircraft. It's an aircraft that is high in demand and is rated, rated as one of the more sought after aircraft within the corporate prop industry or market. It has a track, a, track record of, a track record of over 50 years, and this is mainly because of its versatility, low operating costs, and major improvement over the years. Its tunition design, right comfort, pressurized cabin, all make it a very comfortable aircraft. And I'm sure the commander in chief here and Minister Todd can testify to this because they would have ex experienced the comfort of this aircraft. Some key characteristics is twin engine. It pulls out about 280 knots. And to put this into context, 280 knots is about five miles per minute. Timiri, Ogle is 20 minutes. So imagine moving from Timiri to Ogle in just four minutes. It's amazing. It can cruise at a service ceiling of 25,000 feet. That's where the big boys are. As a jet, so this small aircraft out here, it looks, you know, it looks maybe, you know, not big, but it can go online with the big boys. And its range is about 1,200 miles. That's Timiri to normally Kingston is about 1,300 miles. So we can make Timiri or Ogle to Manly in one flight. Also, with max fuel, this aircraft can take 1,600 pounds. And with max fuel, if you understand science and physics, your payload will diminish. Max fuel below on this aircraft, we can take 1,600 pounds. That eight passengers with their luggage at 200 pounds apiece, that's comfortable for this airplane. If you look at the aircraft before you, you'll make some observations. One, the paint scheme. It comprises colors from the Golan Arrowhead, as you can see. And this signifies patronage to our country and will be the pride, the pride and joy of Guyanese wherever the aircraft goes, whether it's internal or regional. The call sign, as you can see on the tail, the aft section of the aircraft, is 8 Romeo dash 1 GY. Re represents identity and a one Guyana initiative that is a brainchild of the Command in Chief. In its current cabin configuration, it is suitable for state, organizational, and commercial missions internally, regionally, and internationally. Not to make my helipilots jealous, I'll now move to the Bell 412. As you are aware, the Bell 412 EPI, this EPI is the advanced and the more 
modern platform to its predecessor. A predecessor is a medium lift helicopter and it's an upgrade from the old Bell 412. And it's so iconic, it's been here since in the 80s, through the ages, and still with us in 2023, almost 50 years of service. The first Bell 412 EPI arrived on the 13th of March, 2021. This aircraft can transport 13 passengers, the one, I speak, the one that just came in, for a distance of 130 miles and back. So again, you can go to Marbruma, you can go to Cameron, in Bambadai, one tank of fuel, go and come back. Unlike the, the previous one where it has to be um, supported by fuel. Lieutenant Colonel Charles gave a, a, a brief preview as to his key operation capabilities, mainly for access, meaning you can go at a spot and hover more or less at pinpoint, with pinpoint accuracy as a winch, and it's very robust and suited for um, operational flights. Again, it brandishes the patriotic colors of the Golan Arrowhead. And more importantly, it allowed for that seamless transition of our young pilots. It's two crew, so you have a captain and a, a co-pilot, and they can move across the right seat in time. We have two of these platforms, so we have accelerated pilot growth and transition. And we know from, from the operational perspective, we have operational reach, reach within the force to respond to foreign or domestic threats. Collectively, these assets will extend the lives of our skyvan, the backbone of our fleet. We have two, and with, the, with these two helicopters along with the Islander and the Beechcraft support, the skyvan will, will be channeled or be geared towards specialized mission, large cargo transport, etc. Additionally, they will contribute towards the transformation of the image, capability, and operational profile of the Air Corps, the Guyan Defense Force, and the force as a whole, and the country as a whole. My officers, ranks, and civilians at the Air Corps, I thank you for your continued dedication and commitment to service. We, the members of the Air Corps, represent the face of the country. And why I say this? We fly day in, day out. Wherever we go, whether it's the interior or within the Caribbean, we represent the face and the image of the Guyan Defense Force. Your Excellency, Chief of Staff, and others, I want to assure you that we, members of the Air Corps, will continue to seek greatness as excellence remains our watchword. Before I conclude, I want to make, make special thanks or say thanks to some key individuals, mainly an individual that would have taken this beachcraft on his back, literally, to see the project through or see the project of repetition, and that is Major Damon Joseph. He's much more great now than when the project um, commenced. So, Lieutenant Colonel Archie, my 2IC. Very critical, very observant, very keen officer, and all the other technicians and engineers that see this project in petition. Also, Captain Donald Pinder, I know he's here. This pilot, contracted pilot, has been with us from day one. When other pilots were sick, he refused to fly the aircraft because of, the, of his history. He came, despite the teething problems we encountered, he stuck with us. We took the aircraft to Miami, got some problems there. That didn't daunt his spirit. Came back with the aircraft, and now he's doing line training with the senior pilot of the Air Corps. Um, he should depart in a week's time, and thereafter, the aircraft will be in the pilot's hand of the Air Corps, the senior, senior pilots. I thank you. In conclusion, both military and civilians will benefit from training to operate and maintain these aircraft, both locally and overseas. Maintenance and my pilots, we all seek to progress to more complex and challenging our platform. We have them here. Your Excellency, we thank you for this. I can assure you that these assets will take us literally and figuratively to higher altitude as we continue to satisfy the aviation demands of the force and the country. I thank you. Thank you, Sierra Gore, for those uh, brief remarks on the 350 its operational capabilities and the history of the aircraft from when we got it to, to now. At this time, I'd like to invite our ops manager, Colonel Weeks, who was also an integral part of the 
ferry of the Bell 412 helicopter. To give an, yes, to give an overview of the Bell 412 EPI and its journey from the United States to Canada. Colonel Weeks. Thank you, Captain Lynn. Your Excellency, Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and Commander-in-Chief, Honorable Prime Minister, Ministers of Government, Chief of Staff, National Security Advisor, Senior Officers, Officers and Ranks of the Guyan Defense Force, distinguished guests among us. Good afternoon. I am Lieutenant Colonel Anson Weeks, the Flight Operations Manager of the Air Corps. This afternoon, I have been tasked to present a brief overview on the conduct of the ferry flight of our newly acquired Bell 412 EPI helicopter, the second of its type to be added to our fleet. The Guyana Defense Force and Bell Helicopters on Tuesday, the 27th of June, signed the final acceptance documents at the Bell facility in Piney Flats, Tennessee. This effectively transferred ownership of the Bell 412 EPI helicopter with registration number November 533 Bravo Bravo to the government of Guyana. The ferry flight commenced from Piney Flats, Tennessee on Thursday the 29th of June with a maintenance stop in Fort Lauderdale, Florida and the flight resumed to Guyana the following Monday, the 3rd of June, with fuel stops both in Great Exuma, Bahamas, and Turks and Caicos. The ferry flight took the crew and the helicopter on to Dominican Republic and Tortola, and a further routine maintenance stop was made in Antigua, with the ferry flight resuming once again on Friday the 7th of July, with two more fuel stops being made in St. Vincent and Trinidad, before the helicopter finally touched Guyana soil earlier today in Mabaruma. The ferry team consisted of the following Air Corps personnel. Lieutenant Colonel Anson Weeks, yours truly. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Charles. Civilian Engineer Jason Farley. And last but not least, not a member of the Air Corps, but certainly a brother in arms now, Mr. Andre Bertrand, the Bell designated ferry pilot. Just for some numbers you can put in place, the ferry covered a total of 2,550 nautical miles, flying approximate 500 nautical miles daily. The total flight time for the journey was approximately 22 hours, with an average flight time of 4 hours and 30 minutes daily. Now this ferry was completed successfully, and this was attributed to God, the coordinating efforts of the Air Corps, not to forget our Air Corps project manager for this project, Major Kevin Langevine, along with the support of Defense Headquarters and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Important point to note, the diplomatic input by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs facilitated a seamless transition from country to country along the ferry route. Last but certainly not least, we must recognize the invaluable contribution, once again, of our Bell Ferry Pilot, Mr. Andre Bertrand, the Customer Experience, Ma Experience Manager at Piney Flats, Mr. David Hale, who regrets that he can't be here today to share in this occasion, the Regional Sales Representative, Mr. Michael Aguilar, and the Regional Sales Manager for Tropical Aviation, Mr. Sanjeev Burson. Their collective efforts helped the team throughout the process to where we are this afternoon. I am certain without their efforts this day, this would not have been possible. The Bell 412, soon to be 8th Romeo, Alpha Yankee Alpha, named after both our main operating base or defense headquarters, Camp Angana, and Mount Angana, is now home and joins its sister ship in the fleet of the Guyana Defense Force Air Corps, standing ready to conduct missions for the people of Guyana. 
This being said, I thank you. Thank you, Colonel Weeks, for those brief remarks on the journey that the aircraft undertook from the United States to here. So we're moving along with our program. I would like to invite you, Chief of Staff, sir, um, to give some brief remarks and probably a charge the Guyana Defense Force Air Corps. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Captain Lin. His Excellency, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali, Commanding Chief of our Armed Forces, Honorable Prime Minister, Brigadier Mark Phillips, members of the Defense Board, Honorable Bishop Juan Edgel, Minister of Public Works, Captain Gerald Gavaya, National Security Advisor, other heads of agencies and representatives, Mr. Ramesh Gear, Chief Executive Officer of the Jagan International Airport, members of the GDF Central Management Committee, other senior officers, four Sergeant Major ranks, ladies and gentlemen, and members of the media. I'm honored to give brief remarks on this occasion to commission the addition of two aircraft to the Guyana Defense Force Air Corps fleet of aircraft. The new Bell 412 helicopter that you just witnessed landing here and the refurbished King Air 350 Beechcraft. As I endorse the comments said before relating to these two aircraft, I wish to reference the vision of our commanding chief, not for the military, but for Guyana, and more particularly within the context of national development and security. In December 2020, our commanding chief, in one of his many speeches, said, and I quote, we are fashioning an inclusive democracy, predicated upon the respect for our constitution and the rule of law and the will of our people, one in which our sovereignty and territorial integrity are sacrosanct. This is a Guyana that will possess a modern, robust, diversified, and resilient economy capable of delivering economic prosperity, which can be translated in higher levels of employment and improvement in the quality of life of our dear people." End of quote. This vision is grounded in what we see unfolding here today. National development being increasingly guaranteed in a safe and secured environment. James Clare, an author, in the book that he wrote two years ago, revision, revised that is, Atomic Habits, describes progress as looking at an ice cube and seeing the heat rise over so, so slowly until the temperature is at a level that the effects of the heat is evident. I compare this to the acquisition of the Bell 412 helicopter and the refurbished BJ craft. This acquisition signifies the effects of the rise in temperature of our development in Guyana. By all measure, however, our development is not slow like the ice cube. It is cert it's certainly 
is illustrating the realization of our goals after hard work that we have put in as a defense force and the commitment of the Guyana Defense Board chaired by His Excellency. These efforts have now complement our tools that we will now employ and deploy to defend our territory. This is what I refer to as creating that safe and secure space for national development to unfold. Notably, the aircraft you see today, that's specifically the 412 and the Beechcraft, there are many in front of us here, represent an expansion of the fleet at Air Corps. Not only represent that, but a push to establish an ecosystem of institutional support to sustain the serviceability of these air assets. Therefore, addressing the development of our human resources is equally another area of focus. We will see more pilots and engineers trained to accommodate the expansion of the resources here at Air Corps, some of which we are already experiencing. This is a de definite step closer to realizing the directive of the Commander-in-Chief. Important to note, at the operational level, and I know the Commanding Officer Air Corps would have touched on some of them, but at the operational level, one of our roles mandated by the Defense Act is to defend the territorial integrity of Guyana. These assets are complementary to this role in defending our territorial integrity. The Bell 412, for example, enhances our capability to rapidly deploy forces in the most remote areas of our country and to respond to any emergency. This Bell 412 will provide the platform needed for Air Corps to save lives. The King Air also is complementary to this effort. It has a substantial role, a potential role, I should say, in our territorial defense to conduct intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance type operations. This is in keeping with our national defense policy, and it aligns seamlessly with the recent announcement by our commander in chief of a defense, defense policy initiative, another key milestone in our national strategic outlook. For all this, as Chief of Staff, I'm thankful for the work done by our officers, a role for which Brigadier Bess, you're here, sir, was part of in the initial stage and for us getting here. Also, I want to acknowledge Commanding Officer Air Corps and his team for the work that they have done, and thank you for your service to the Ghana Defense Force and to the nation. I urge you to continue to serve well and manage these resources placed in your care. Finally, I extend humble thanks to the Commanding Chief for his foresight and the commitment to see the force develop its capabilities. And to the members of the Defense Board, I thank you also and look forward for your continued guidance, guidance as we set to build and continue to build a prosperous and secure Guyana. Thank you. I know tradition would have it, Brigadier Bess, and you led the charge that we introduce the Commander in Chief. All drinks today is for on me. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our Commander in Chief, and I'll be short. 
Last year, the commander in chief stand right here and he spoke to the officers and ranks of Air Corps. From then to now, the commander in chief continued to follow through with his vision to provide the resources that the GDF and the team have been working to recommend for us to service our roles. I can dare say there are two things since the commander in chief last spoke at this particular location. One, he continued to be an excellent president for everyone and we continue to see it across the country. And two, he is a consolidated father, having welcomed the birth of his second son. Commander Chief, I welcome to you to the board. Thank you very much. Please have your seats. First of all, allow me to congratulate the leadership and team of Air Corps, the Chief of Staff, and team of the Guyana Defense Force, and acknowledge also the work of our immediate past Chief of Staff, Bess, I think he's here, the members of the Defense Board, and in particular, from my office, the National Security Advisor, and all the stakeholders who contributed significantly to the successful return of the Beechcraft and the successful acquisition of the new Bell 412. A lot has been said, a lot was already said on the assets itself. But perhaps the greatest asset that we've invested in for both the Beechcraft and this new 412 will be the human resource assets of the Guyana Defense Force. We have invested heavily in ensuring that we have the right complement of human resource personnel and also the right level of training. I would want to invite in front those who are trained on the Beechcraft and the 412 so that we can acknowledge them and the role they will play in ensuring that these assets are efficiently, effectively, reliably uh, brought into operation, but more importantly, that we keep them into operation with good safety measures, uh, with care, and ensuring that the assets are at all times the pride of our work. So I'll ask you to come in front so they we can acknowledge you, uh, all those who are trained, you know yourselves, on the Beechcraft and Port Well. If this is the speed at which you are going, then you are not doing justice to the craft. Let us give them a resounding round of applause. So it is not only about the assets. These assets are just a part of the whole equation. The asset means nothing if we don't have the human resource capacity, if we don't have the right skill set. And if you, as you can see here, the level of investment we have made in training and the emphasis we have placed on training tells a story of how important we value the human resource asset in the Guyana Defense Force. Thank you very much. Please. It is my view that the modernization of Air Corps or the aviation wing of the Guyana Defense Force has just begun. I must compliment the Chief of Staff for contextualizing the vision of the country and for the seamless integration 
of what is needed in the Guyana Defense Force in ensuring that the vision of national prosperity embedded with national security is complementary and advanced together. So today as we celebrate the acquisition of these assets, we're in the final stages of having a contract for another piece of asset, that is the Don Air. So before the end of this year, we will have the contract in place for the Don Air, and we'll have another set of personnel from the Guyana Defense Force sent to training on the Don Air. So we'll have another complement of human resource asset with another piece of asset to secure our borders and to meet the expanding demands of national development. And the expanded demand of national development also requires rapid investment in our Coast Guard, our marine assets. And whilst we're awaiting the new Metal Shark arrival, we're already in discussions with different stakeholders on a model ship that would help us in securing our EZ and ensuring that the commercial value of our EZ is not exploited without us having a presence there. And that is what the Beechcraft would allow us to do when outfitted with additional equipment in the dawn air when that comes into the fleet. It would help us to tremendously secure our EZ. We know from information that has been shared with us that we are losing a lot of revenue with illegal fishing within our EZ. So the commercial viability of the investment is one that is also taken into consideration. The Defense Board has also authorized the Air Corps, the Chief of Staff, to move now on setting out a plan to take over the operations, maintenance of the Gaisuku Hanga at Ogle. So that that Gaisuku Hanga would now come into use for Air Corps, but in an expanded way. For aggressive policing, we also need assets to support our police along the coast and we'll be investing in pieces of asset to support policing work. And the military, the defense force, will have the responsibility of ensuring that we have adequately trained police officers to be part of this transition. So that's another piece of asset that will be coming under the wings of the Air Corps and the wings of the Guyana Defense Force. More importantly, I've authorized work to be concluded before the third quarter in this year to have a full presentation to the Defense Board of uh, aviation school, military and civil aviation school to be run by the Air Corps, to be managed by the Air Corps, where are we going to reach out to all our retired assets from the Air Corps and those regionally as we seek to build one of the most modern, advanced aviation school in the Caribbean here in Guyana, providing training for all of the Caribbean. We're hoping to have all the formalities completed before the end of this year, so that by the first quarter next year, that school will be in full operation, both for the Defense Force, military, and security personnel in the region, and also to train civilian pilots and commercial pilots here in Guyana. We're sparing no effort in ensuring that we put our Guyana Defense Force and the Air Corps in the front line of modernization and transformation and creating an environment in which we are not second to none, but only second to ourselves. 
This vision requires transformation in thinking, transformation in the approach to our work, the workplace culture, and I've spoken about this already right here. The workforce culture must change and change rapidly. Aviation requires additional discipline, additional responsibility, and we're going to hold the leadership of Air Corps accountable. This is not the season or time to be laid back. This is a time to be transformative in what we do. And I'm confident that we have the skills, the capacity, the talent in Air Corps to achieve all of which we set ourselves to achieve. Your country has invested tremendously in you. Many of you here in Air Corps, your country has invested heavily in you. We also have to break the tradition of losing highly skilled personnel after you would have invested heavily in training, heavily in building your capacity. And we can only do so if we create a comprehensive pathway for career development also. Those who are pilots and engineers, those who are safety officers, must see their journey not ending after retirement, but see right in Air Corps the ability to transition into a new form of service. And that is what the school will allow us to do. It is no smiling matter. This is not a joke. This is a comprehensive and holistic strategy that we must be serious about. We are not going to idle our way around the transformation of Air Force. This is a very serious matter. I've extended to Chief of Staff, the Defense Board, has made it very clear the direction in which we want to go. I expect a deep sense of responsibility and a deep sense of commitment. I do not expect immaturity a negative culture to be impediment to the transformation we want. We are committed to your development. We are committed to the development of Air Corps and the Guyana Defense Force. But you must also be committed. You must also be committed in what you do. And I said before, every single member of the team, every single member of the team here is critical to this. The man who cut the grass out there must understand how important it is to remove the plastic whilst he cut the grass. Because as the chopper comes in, the plastic could have been the end of the chopper. In aviation, safety is every single person's responsibility. Safety is everyone's responsibility. But for safety to be everyone's responsibility, there must be a culture of safety that is developed. There must be a culture of responsibility. I 
expect that as, we, as these plans unfold, that we'll reposition ourselves and our commitment in the interest of Air Corps and the Guyana Defense Force. I thank you. I congratulate everyone, the leadership of Air Corps, all the officers and the staff who went on training. I congratulate all of you for your commitment in ensuring our success thus far. Thank you very much and God bless you. Commanding Chief, we'd like to thank you for those words that you you left with us, sir. And uh, I can assure you that we at the Air Corps uh, we look forward to the bright future that is promised for us, and we also look forward to implementing these assets and serving the nation well um, in a bid to dominate our land, our sea, and our airspace, along with the other departments and units of the force, sir. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to invite uh, Lieutenant Hack to move the boat to tanks on behalf of the officers and ranks of the Air Force and the Guyana Defense Force. Your Excellency, Honorable Prime Minister, Ministers of Government, Special Invitees, Chief of Staff, Senior Officers, Officers, Ranks, and all present. Good afternoon. I am Lieutenant Hack. Your Excellency, Commander-in-Chief, I am honored to move a vote of thanks of this simple yet significant commissioning ceremony for the newly acquired air asset. The state-of-the-art air asset signify a monumental leap forward in our capabilities and are a testament of your unwavering commitment to excellence and innovation. During your address, you highlighted additional fleet upgrades and structure upgrades transforming this unit to become second to no one but ourselves. You have also emphasized the importance of not only physical assets, but the human assets. From your guidance and call to action, I can assure you, as a serving member of the Guyana Defense Force, we will work tirelessly to achieve your stated objectives with the highest degree of professionalism, synonymous to the Guyana Defense Force. We will strive to be transformative and to become the best aviation service provider not only in Guyana, but in the Caribbean. Your Excellency, on behalf of the Chief of Staff, Senior Officers, ranks, and all present, I would like to convey our gratitude for the confidence you have placed in our abilities to effectively implement your vision for the Guyana Defense Force, in, spe in specific, and the Cooperative Republic of Guyana in general. For this again, I say thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Hack. Um, sir, at this time, I would like to invite uh, the Force Chaplain, Reverend Corbin, to uh, deal with the consecration of the assets. And after which, I would just like to invite everyone to the northern half, uh, the northern end of the southern half of the hangar, and uh, we could partake in some refreshments. Thank you. Pleasant good afternoon, Your Excellency, Prime Minister, Chief of Staff and all other members of the cabinet can stand as we commence this part of the ceremony. Thank you. After this petition, I will be escorted to the craft to complete the exercise, so I'll ask you to remain, sir. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you today that you have granted this nation vision and leadership reposed in the, His Excellency the President and his Cabinet, the Defense Board, and our Chief of Staff and his command team, and members of our civilian force that have been supporting the Air Corps. I thank you as your servant that you have granted me a voice to bless and to consecrate these assets 
that have been a manifestation of their vision this particular afternoon, and to be able by your power to release a blessing on the craft and the users of this craft. My petition is, God, that as we continue to expand the reach of the role of this institution, this noble Guiana Defense Force, that the assets that continue to be added will strengthen the solidarity of our nation to protect our integrity. These mercies I ask in your son's precious name. Amen. Can you remain standing? Thank you. Let's start. 